so it's finally come time for our first fallow grind video and this is certainly the first time of the five species that have had great ones that our first grinding video has been more than 800 kills in we're in the area of 850 kills now and many of those have been on stream the problem with doing that is that we've already amassed such a kind of large collection of trophies that it would be impossible to put all of them into a video without just kind of bombarding you with clips of Trophy Fallow. And we've already got the montages for stuff like that. So probably a lot of smaller rares, smaller diamonds, and things like that will be left just as that, just stream kills that are probably exclusive to those stream bots. And I think with Fallow Deer, because so many diamonds and rares tend to show up, that's probably going to be okay. But at this point, being nearly 1,000 kills in, we're getting to the stage where the grind, for the most part, is getting pretty consistent. A lot of times when you first start grinding for anything, zones shift around a lot, you gotta move tents, tripods, and all that kind of thing. We're getting to the point now where that's less of a problem, and that's typically a good thing. By the way, when this happens, when a fallow just starts floating away, I just fast travel away and come back for it. Hopefully we remember, and actually I think there should be more bucks there than there were. We may be a touch early, so it may actually not be the worst thing to come back. But a lot of you guys have been asking for a fallow guide and I think at some stage we may do a specific guide but at least for this video what I'm gonna try to do is continually show the map as we go along just so you can kind of see where we're at and the problem with doing a fallow guide in particular is that everybody's maps going to be unique anyway and there's only going to be so much information that a guide can actually put out that's actually useful to everybody the most important thing, really with any grind, not just fallow, is going around during the drink time of the species you want to grind for, and locating all your drink zones, setting up appropriately, and basically starting to shoot as many as you can. So, while a guide can be useful, I think what it comes down to is just finding all the zones and all the fallow on your particular map. And therefore, hopefully, in showing the locations that we're going to today, it can help you at least narrow down what spots you maybe want to check out. So, it is, of all the species we've ever grinded for, the lowest kind of amount of areas that we gotta check, which really speeds things up. That's why we're at 850 kills in just a couple of days of grinding. And already a couple of decent ones, got a 218 there. And this guy, I think, is maybe close to 230. Definitely one of the better white fur type ones that we've had thus far. And obviously that's the one that I've been talking about wanting to get a diamond of 240 in fact. Not bad for a level 4. So we've got those two laying back there and typically this will happen. I've got those two zones there and fast travel to this outpost kind of puts us ahead of those fleeing ones and gets us those shots. However, oftentimes, though I don't see any right now, we get some drinking across the river as well. But we do have them. Got three pretty insignificant ones there. They're in a bit of a different spot but either way, We'll try to get them through the fog. Just cannot see that well. We got too well. And hit that guy at least twice, so he'll go down. Let's go back and claim stuff, and then fast travel across and get them. And unfortunately, these two were not quite as impressive as the two we got after them. But every single one matters, and it's allowed us, you know, by getting all these and going back and forth between our spots, to basically achieve like one fallow per minute with our typical rate especially now that we've kind of found where some of the fallow have moved to now i mentioned that these fallow were in a spot that they typically are not and this tent therefore is about 150 meters from where the fallow that we shot are that's probably not ideal we don't want to run this distance every time and i won't just move this tent based on one change typically i'll give it two or three runs and if it's continually happening then I'll move my setup. One thing I've done differently with the fallow grind in particular is rather than carrying a full loadout of weapons that may allow us to shoot other things we encounter on the grind, our loadout is basically one gun, tents, and typically tripods. I think I set up my last tripod recently and need to buy new ones. And that just allows us to basically on the fly adjust our setup to whatever's going on. So instead of carrying a bunch of guns and needing to change my loadout and grabbing tents and doing it later, which is always what happens, I've got the tents on me and I can move them basically whenever I need to. But that is that chunk of the river already done. This was where we used to start our grinds and something changed. Again, finding them is so important. I think I know where they are now and 
It seems like there's a lot. And at least the first part of that is looking to be pretty much confirmed. So the last part I talked about, I'll usually give it two or three runs to see if a change seems to be like consistent and then move my setup. This is, I think, the third time I've had the fallow here and not kind of over to our left where they used to be. So next time I go through, I'll grab that tent and move it over to here. The reason I can't just place a tent now is we do have the maximum amount on the map already. So we can't just place another one. We'll have to move one, but it's not going to take too long to do. But it's definitely going to become important. We have a pretty good looking one out there. A 4 up to 245. And it's over in that area as Sir 12 is once again trying to get in the way. Over in that area is where I've basically discovered all of our missing fallow. For a while we were getting 30 per run and a run takes about 30 minutes. That one fallow per minute rate that I talked about. Then we dip below that because there were some missing fallow. Assuming that they are in the place they've been the last two runs, we should see probably somewhere between 5 and 10, right over here next to that tripod, and across the way. I don't know what that guy's doing, but maybe a new zone that he could be on the way to? If it's a solo fallow, him making a new zone and us discovering it really wouldn't matter anyway. But we'll take that, and as we approach this tripod, we should start to be able to spot the other ones that, at least typically, are in the area. The zone is right down there. Got another nice four down there. And I think just one other male. Last couple times there's been like four or five. But again, when you kind of lose fallow when zones move, a lot of times they kind of get all stacked up into one area. And once you start to hunt that area again, things kind of balance back out. So that's not too surprising. Also, typically, there's going to be more over to the left. Now, I don't see any at the moment, but they do at times actually run back towards us once we start shooting these. So let's get that big one. He's got a chance at least to be a level 4 diamond. And we did get him. And we did have a fleeing fallow call. And we have that other big 4 that we shot. So let's claim that. And we'll just pay attention to if any run our direction. Basically like that. But ideally, you know, a buck and not one solo doe. And that right there, by the way, is what happens. They get stuck there. And that's why I've got the tripod. I prefer not to just grind fallow that get stuck. But it's a spot they spawn and they do get stuck. And it would just cause a ton of hunting pressure if we didn't have the tripod. There's another one, but just a doe. And maybe things have kind of balanced themselves back out then, if we don't have more. Now, I probably need like three tents in this area to grind it properly, but for now we have an outpost and an ATV. And there were more over there. I'm gonna lose our ATV for a moment, but I want to know what we could be dealing with. One, two small bucks. And that appears to be it. So maybe they've just moved a little bit over to the side. And again, if we had the two or three tents in this area that I talked about, probably we could solve this. That one buck is standing there. The only thing is we have to go way back over there and get it. And already we are kind of pushing it for time. So I think we'll leave him for next time. It wouldn't be, I don't know, maybe we can go back and claim him after the, the drink time ends. There's no point in not shooting it. But we're already at 1219. Unfortunately, like seemingly everything else, Fallow, once you start grinding them, do seem to get to the zones late. So we have 30 minutes to get through all the spots we're trying to go, and it takes 30, 35 minutes to get to them. Especially when new zones start to kind of populate again. Been a lot of really solid fours this run. So the way that we kind of handle this zone, because we don't have enough tents to really cover all the spots that we want, is actually back up beyond 250 meters so they won't hear the shot. Go ahead and get that guy as he stopped right when we shot. These fallow over here, maybe a couple of them heard it, but they're not going to spook. And ideally, we can at least get three of the four. I don't know that we'll get all four if we get lucky and they're slow. And specifically, the ones that we shoot last are slow to flee. Maybe. But we're just going to try to do as well as we can here. Oh, and we might have. That shot may have hit a touch high. The other three are down pretty quick, and he's not going far. That worked. But I do hope, as a lot of this stuff probably feels a little bit rushed, like I said, we are on a very limited time frame to get to all the spots that we want to. Hopefully, you can kind of see the way that we're doing this in somewhat of the best way to set up. There's, there's spots, as I mentioned, that we don't have set up ideally at the moment. They just need to be changed, and I try to give enough time to make sure the changes are going to be consistent so that we're not just moving the tents back the very next run. But one thing is for sure, fallow and good-sized fallow 
are dropping at a pretty good rate. We actually were far back on that, but it still got them down. And while this lake is probably not the best setup because it requires a lot of running around, one thing that it has been is our best diamond producer of anywhere on the map. And it's only been since, I think, Reventuli Coast when they did the redistribution that actually had Fallow Drink in here. This is basically the starter lake. When you first get the map, you spawn like right down here. One of those diamonds that I just mentioned was one that I've been hoping to see and actually, ironically enough, just so happens to have the same fur type as that guy right there. Obviously the new fur types are chocolate and white. The chocolate looks really cool and this lake gave us a pretty good one. Now that is a big fallow deer. 241 to 283 isn't a crazy estimate, but this is the first time on this entire grind that we've actually seen like the big racks. So what we're gonna do is make sure we're beyond 200 meters from all of these bucks. And then we'll just go ahead and try to take that guy so that we don't end up spooking them and kind of cutting what we can get here in half. So make sure we get this. That's about 250. Should drop right into the lungs and it's going to. That's a chocolate fur type again. It's bizarre. Like they're definitely an uncommon. I think they are a little more common than the white fur type, but I'm pretty sure every actual diamond that we've gotten, because there's been a number of trolls, has had the chocolate fur type. But this is run number one of the day and probably within the first 10 15 kills so definitely not a bad way to get started but that's gonna be our highest scoring fallow diamond thus far in the grind for sure 265.98 definitely gonna look a little better than i think it was a 255 chocolate that we had those look really nice with like the big diamond antlers i really hope we can get one Literally with any other fur type, but specifically with the white fur type by the time we're done here, but encouraging to finally see, like, a really big one. So that gives us one of the two new uncommon diamonds for Fallow Deer on this grind thus far. And we actually had killed, I think, two diamond chocolate fur types before that, at least one of those being on stream. But that was our first, like, really big one, and obviously the one that we'll want to display the most in the lodge. This is just one of those spots where the fallow drink in a, a tough to get to spot we killed that one earlier and either spooked whatever other bucks might have been here or maybe that was it it actually kind of worked out better than normal they were spawning over here and it was just tough to grind that actually kind of saved us a little time looking like just one at this lake what was weird was we for a while seemingly had like a group of them here and now we just get maybe one to three solos at different spots but definitely not gonna complain when we can get them that fast and I think that's gonna take us down to the peninsula in the southeast we're really pressed for time here so we may not get to kill everything that we typically do but we'll try our best so the first thing is going to be that fallow buck right there there's a thing that I've been doing by the way that I really like it's kind of like a a different take on the 22 strat we got to get to within 250 meters of him which we more or less are and then we can just fire a shot into the air. It's going to alert him, but it's not going to spook him. I mentioned I'm not carrying any other guns. We've got the tents and tripods. So I can't use the 22 strat because I don't have it. Doing that works just as well. It does the exact same thing. But that's going to bring us one extra one. Then we got to go up over this hill to the other zone and then ideally up to here yet. It's 1247. We got to get to the top right lake by 1300. I think we can just barely make it. And, you know, I love fallow grinding for a number of reasons. It was something we did long before fallow deer had a great one. We used to grind for rares. And I guess one of the reasons is they're fairly easy to grind for, especially when, you know, you can make the shots. But it's definitely a little bit more, like, stressful than moose grinding because it's such, like, a time constraint to get to all the spots. And the way that I love to grind for anything is to cover as much of the map as possible. Now I'm not quite sure what happened on that other one. Maybe a gut shot and that dude had started to flee. Still medium bleed rate, he won't go too far. And the nice thing is actually the reason that I started running it this way, when they are hit poorly at this zone, they run right to the other spot we gotta go to. And it's 1255, so we're really pushing it. And actually we just shot high there, right in the vertebrae. So we'll see if there's any down here, like down at this spot. I don't even have the drink zone anymore there. I think I deleted it, but they seem to still show up. Although in this case, I don't see them. Oh, actually, there's one there. So I guess we might as well get that. 
He's about 260 meters out. Really going to be pushing it to get down there and fast travel in time, but I think we can do it. While we're here, we've got yet another one of those trophies that are definitely worthy of putting in videos like this. And it came from this spot. I don't know. Some of these shots today have been really lucky. I don't know how we just did that. Naturally, he was sitting in the worst spot I could imagine to not spook him. But we've got our diamond white fur type fallow right there. 256 minimum. And he's a wide set rack. This guy, I think, is going to score really, really high. And all we have to do is make the shot. Now, in any other circumstance, there's bucks all over the place. And we'd be trying to get a bunch of them. We may still get several, but we're definitely going to make sure we get this guy down first. I don't have the 22. I've been carrying just the 308 and 10s. So we need to alert him just by running closer. I think we've just done that. That is an interesting looking rack. I'm really not sure if it's the big rack or not. Honestly, we'll worry about getting these guys on the next run because I want to see what this is. But we've now had, I think, three chocolate fur type diamonds. We've definitely had a dark variation. We've definitely had spotted. I don't know if we've had dark spotted on this grind, but our white fur type diamond is down and definitely a vital hit. I can't tell if that's the big rack or not. 264. So I don't think it is based on the fact that it's so wide set, and actually, his brow tines are very short. So I think this is a smaller rack. This just really wide set and therefore scores quite high. But that's really cool. This was outside of like a super rare, or maybe just a really big rare. Basically the number one kill that I wanted, I guess other than a great one too, in this Fallow Deer grind. I don't know how I tracked him 965 meters. I guess at some point I picked up his track, but pretty darn cool. And I'm really thinking our multi-mount, I loved having the 270 diamond and two rares. But we've got a white fur type diamond, a chocolate diamond, and that 270 diamond. That might look pretty darn cool. But already, and I say already despite the fact that we are nearing 1,000 kills, we do have one of each of the new uncommon diamonds. And the thing that I really like about the white fur type one, despite the fact that it wasn't the 270 that I thought it may have been when I first saw it, is going to provide a little bit of kind of variance to the antlers we have in the multi-mount. And indeed, I am thinking we're going to do our 270 diamond fallow, the chocolate diamond that we had early in the video, and now the white fur type diamond that we just shot here at this location. I think it's going to make for a really cool mount. And frankly, we don't have any really big rares. So I think it works to do two uncommon diamonds with an absolute monster in that 270. And it's 1303, but I think we can live with that. Gotta claim this guy, and again, maybe some moving around of tents could help us out, but we are, for the most part, accomplishing what we need to in the time frame with our current setup. So I never want to get too crazy in moving that stuff around. At least, again, not before I know everything's going to be consistent. Now this spot, speaking of consistency, is typically anything but. I just never know where the fallow are going to show up, and that makes it really tough to place tents to kind of efficiently hunt it. Like, they're all over the place, and I just don't have a great way of doing it. We did that thing at the starter lake where we went more than 250 meters from the first fallow so that they wouldn't hear the shot. We're going to try that, but probably they're going to start to move because it's already late and they're going to be leaving their zones. These guys are already doing that. So as quickly as we can... We're going to try to take out these guys. He's on his way out too. However, at that range, it's not too hard to hit him on the move. He got out of there just before our shot hit right where he was standing. It's going to get him, but probably not an easy track. That dude's on his way out, so maybe we can get him at 300. And you can kind of see why this spot is just pure chaos. It's just really tough to get all the fallow down. Typically, in one way or another we do, whether it's them coming back when we claim other ones, or maybe them spawning in a more, you know, suitable way to grind. But, this one I would say is, you know, less than ideal in terms of where our fallow have shown up. I think we're going to get three out of that. And by the way, you may think, you know, why you're not using a tripod, you're going to delete all your zones. We totally are, but they don't have anywhere else to go, they just keep coming back here. So, not gonna lie, I don't typically do this, and I don't know the best way to do this. Reloading would have been a grand idea. There was one decent one that we haven't shot yet. 
Unless he went a different direction? I don't know where he got to. But we definitely got a bunch, even if that one got away. And I think we can live with that. There's that one, but there was one better for her. And I definitely wouldn't say this run is over until it's definitely over. On stream, I think Thursday night, we killed something like, I think 200 fallow. And we hadn't had a diamond the entire time. At the very end of the run, like literally after we had claimed everything, we turned around and there was just a level five standing in the middle of this spot. It just happens at this lake. So until we claim everything, I wouldn't say for sure that we're not getting any diamonds on this particular run, but it looks like it's gonna be a bunch of kills with, actually, despite the fact that there were a bunch of big fours, not even a single five. And so in what's going to be 31 minutes until we claim these two fallow over here, I think we killed close to 35 fallow. I know that we started this particular run at 57,372 fallow, I believe it was. I know the 72 part's correct. That's what it would have been. So therefore we killed 34 fallow in 31 minutes. If we can do a rate like that the entire time, 60, nearly 70 fallow an hour, I mean, compared to Moose that was maybe 20, 25 if we were lucky, we can live with that, no problem. But we do have a really cool multi-mount to go and put together back in the main lodge, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that actually turns out with the new uncommons. And I'm not gonna lie, I really love how this turned out. I, I like the rares, but there's two things. Number one, Having, you know, all diamonds in there is really cool, and it just reminds me of this mount right here. If everything went, you know, exactly to plan, this mount one day will consist of a chocolate diamond, a white fur type diamond, and a great one, instead of the 270. Maybe the 270 could be slapped on the wall right over there, but it just looks so nice. I'm a huge fan of the chocolate variation. The white variation, the very one I said I wanted the diamond of, it's cool to now have one. And they've got the different antlers. Like, he's the smaller rack, but really wide set, so he scores quite nicely. I think at 264. So actually, he's our second biggest diamond of the grind so far, despite having, I think, a couple of, like, bigger rack ones. But just really, really cool. And as I said, everything in a fallow grind video, a video that we intend to kill as many fallow as we can, is just naturally going to be rushed. And I'm sure it felt, like, convoluted. Just everything has to happen so fast. But let me know if the information we had in this video, showing the map as we went along to all the different spots, kind of how we grind the tripods and the way that we do that, if that stuff was helpful to you guys and, you know, it can help you out on your grinds. If not, I'll definitely look at doing a fallow guide specifically. Just as I said, it's tough when everybody's map's going to be a little bit different and everybody's setup's going to be unique. But let me know what you guys think about that and we'll see what we do from there as far as a actual fallow guide. But on that note, that is going to do it for this video, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.